Good morning. Today is May 2nd, 2021. I am Robbie Bomer, your liturgist for the month of May. This, that's, this week uh, we'll be starting a new women's group. Um, I believe it starts May the 10th. There will be um, dinner provided. Um, we'll also be having a youth summer camp. Uh, we're going to Cedar Canyon this summer. If uh, anybody would like to sponsor a kid, we would love to have you do that. Um, Monday, we'll have a ladies' Bible study at 9 a.m. Tuesday, men's Bible study will be at 6. Wednesday, we'll have a Bible study of the Holy Spirit at 12 p.m. Um, as well as youth at 6. And then Sunday, we'll have uh, discipleship groups and worship. Um, I guess we'll start with a prayer. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for all of the growing experiences you provide for us. And we hope that you never stop. Let them come. We hope that all are taken care of and all needs are met. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand in and sing loud. We praise the name of Jesus Christ, resurrected King. We praise the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We come as God's holy people into his holy presence and now spirit come quiet our hearts bring to mind those who are in need of prayer but first bring to mind and quicken and chasten our own minds and souls and hearts and feelings and attitudes and actions we enter into this time of confession and repentance. Confess your sins before God. You can do so in your seat. You can come down and kneel at the altar. This is your time with Jesus Christ. Jesus, as we have named our trespasses, our sins, we repent. And we
we ask for power to keep walking towards you. And we hear these beautiful words in the name of Jesus Christ and all the church said, you are forgiven. And now, Lord, we come into a time of intercession. Lift up those who are in need of prayer. We will agree as a church in your name on their behalf. Betty Wood. We lift up Betty Wood. We lift up Marilyn Cox. We lift up Tom and ask that you bring healing upon his leg and through that surgery in Jesus' name. Say that again. We lift up Bruce Purdy. We lift up Debbie Connor. Pat Nichols. We lift up Pat Nichols. Lord Jesus, we lift up our country in turmoil. We, pray, we, we, we help us to pray for blessings rather than curse those Rather than help us stop, help us stop, help me to stop. Lord, we pray that you come and save us, save our nation. Help us to be a guiding light to a broken world. Lord Jesus, restore our freedom as a people so that we may continue doing your will as a sovereign nation according to your sovereign will. Lord Jesus, we pray for our political leaders. Give them the wisdom they don't have by your Holy Spirit, whether they believe in you or not. Come, Holy Spirit. Be with our armed men and women, civilian, police, and first responders, and those who are in a service to our country. Protect them today and let them joyously fulfill their calling in Jesus name we pray for your persecuted church who is giving the last full measure today to your gospel we pray the prayer you taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for us. Amen. Let us continue worship. Would you stand for the offering? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above me, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and for the sacred candy ball it's all yours today okay so uh do you remember like when like the pastor would break off a piece of bread and maybe give it to you to eat and we call it communion well it's kind of like this today you're the only one here and you get all of the sacred candy bowl today not all of it but you're like, it's like this, this whole thing was made for you and designed for you. Just you alone. 
So it's kind of like that when we come and we get the juice and we get the bread. It's like Jesus' death and resurrection and we celebrate it through that bread and juice. It's like it's all for you. Jesus died. It's like Jesus died and rose again just for you. All of it's for you. So uh, think about that today, if you can remember, that when you come today, Jesus is here to give you all of his blessing, all of his salvation, all of his love, because, because Jesus loves you. This we know, right? Yep, okay. Let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I repeat after me. Father, Father Son, and Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit help, us help us to remember, remember that, you that you died for me. In Jesus' name, Jesus you Christ. rose again Christ. for me Christ. and all of us. Amen. Amen. Here you go. Good choice. All right. Oh, oh. Yay. He got as much candy as he, as he possibly could, the M&M's. Celebrations of blessings you want to share this morning. Well, let me offer you an opportunity on Wednesday afternoon, uh, 5.30. We're going to pack for snack pack for the month of May. Come join us. It takes about 30 minutes. won't be long. We'd love to have you. We know that God is good. All, all the time. time. And all the time. God is good. They're making their way forward. If you please stand, we're going to see Jesus paid it all. We'll go on to uh, Lamb of God. If you want to follow along on that one, you can open the faith we sing up to 2113.
Just a little lower. Try it again. Good morning, church. All right, if you would turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to read. We are going to read verses. Let's just go 19 through the end of the chapter. That's 27. 1 Corinthians Chapter 9, verse 19, through the end of the chapter. Did anybody watch the NFL draft this week? No? Okay, I think I'm in the wrong place. (laughs) Nobody watched the NFL draft? You did? Okay. Were you you waiting to see who a particular... Uh, college player where he was drafted were you waiting on one one of them who who is it okay is he a tech player No. you may be in the wrong place if you say Alabama (laughs) I'm never this Aggie's never doing that no no I think that uh, yeah there are a couple it's louder over here there are a couple Aggies I, I was waiting to see Despite all of its wokeness and all the political drama the NFL has brought upon itself, I think yesterday, well, in the day before, uh, since Thursday, it is the best thing about the NFL. It is the most, it is, it is the best thing. Better than the Super Bowl, better than all the records, I dare say better than watching Pat Mahomes break every record, and he'll break every record that's ever probably uh, ever written. Maybe not Super Bowls, but every other one. Why is it so great? What was it about the draft? Well, what we saw over and over and over again is the fulfillment of these kids' dreams. They have been working, most of them, since they, are, since they were four years old, all right? Playing, uh, what, what, what do you do at four years old? Flag football? 
you know, something like that. They have been working since four years old. Some of them a little later, but many of them, the top flight uh, draftees, they have put in countless, countless hours. If you don't think they've been in the weight room, uh, look at them with their shirts off. It, it's, it looks like they look like bodybuilders, right? They have done the grind, right? That's what they call it, the grind, because they have been working on getting that bag, all right? They'll say that and they'll tweet it, get that bag. What does that mean? A bag of what? A bag of money in the draft, right? Here are these kids. And I still, 22, 23, I mean, they're not really kids anymore, but I'm thinking of them as kids, okay? And they have given up things. And they have adopted new practices. They have quit eating and drinking junk food. They have eaten protein shakes and all kinds of stuff we just don't really want to eat, right? These kids have dedicated themselves. Their summers, they play camp seven on seven. And their parents, okay? Their parents have sacrificed. There's probably, I bet you anything, Time and time again, there's you know a single mom raising the kids, working two jobs. There's grandmother raising the kids. Uh, you know, moms uh, here, dads here. They don't even know who dad is. And then there are countless others. They grow up in the suburb. They have everything you know given to them. It's just like one blessed life uh, step to another. It is a total commitment to a single goal. Paul uses a metaphor kind of like that to say we have been called to a total individual and corporate team purpose with the end goal of the transformation of our life and the sharing of the gospel to all the world. And the church said, Amen. let's read. Chapter 9. <clears throat> Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. He's talking about presently. So as to win those under the law. He's talking about the Jewish and his countrymen who are still not followers of Jesus doing the old thing. To the weak I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all men so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown. He's using the images of the, what we call the Olympics, the Greek games. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man, a boxer, beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. What's our competition? What are we doing? What's this about? Why are we competing? Why are we running this race of discipleship? Where are we headed? What's the big picture? 
And what are we sp- supposed to do? Paul addresses all those types of questions. Okay? And he wants you in your life and as a church to win that prize that never fades, that never rusts, that moths can't come in and eat away. It's not some, it's not some crown of like, uh, what, what is it like? I don't know. I hear what if they put around their head and, uh, 2,000 years ago? No, this is a crown that endures forever and ever and ever. That's what we are about. The question is, will you finish? Uh, when I was 20, I was at NIMI, New Mexico Military Institute. And I don't know why I decided to. This is my sophomore year, sophomore year but it's probably my friend, uh, uh, Payoness. And he said, let's go run the Baton Memorial Death March. Has anyone ever heard of the Baton Memorial Death March at Alamogordo? At the missile base? Yeah, okay. It is a marathon, 25 miles, and uh, part of it is through white scenes, okay? So somewhere in the fall, uh, or early September, we started training. Now my friend, I could, I could outrun my old roommate, Anthony. He probably told me about it. And I used to laugh at Anthony because when he came from California, he never finished, he never finished high school. Right? So he came in, he was a smoker, and the dude could not run a quarter mile around the track. And uh, I play, I'm an old ball player and all that, and I would just kind of laugh at him, right? Well, Peyton Esta joined the Marines. So when he came back, he looked different, he acted different, and he could run a five minute mile. And he was laughing at me. So I start training and running with Panessa, and man, he just leaves me in the dust. There is no possible way I could keep up. But I keep on, keep on, keep on. We ran in combat boots. We took a 40 pound backpack and we just hiked everywhere and all this stuff. Well, the race came and there were uh, 9,000 people there. And most of them were servicemen from Germany, from England, uh, from France, they're all in El Paso and Al- Alamogordo. They traveled all over the world to uh, finish and complete this race. And there's just like me, right? So we get running. I don't know when it was, 6 a.m. We got up at 4 a.m. because people in the military love getting up at 4 a.m. and it's not really necessary. And we started running. It's dark. And we honored those uh, people who were there who actually lived through the Bataan Death March, and if you don't know what that is, you can Google it later. We start running, and man, I am feeling great. I'm just chugging along, and I get past mile five and mile 10, and you know, I'm eating oranges on the way, and I I mean, it's just endorphin city, right? And I'm just cruising, and I'm thinking, man, I have really, I've really done well. I really trained myself. And I wasn't the fastest, but then I, uh, you know, I passed this special forces unit and they're running like with 50 pounds on their back, but you know, hey guys, how you doing, right? They're, uh, they're from Britain. Uh, and, and, and I get to about mile 21 and I can see the base. It's just like a clear street. I mean, it is like going into the base right there. I can see it. Then all of a sudden, they point me that way. And here comes a hill in white sands, and the sand is about that thick, and I can't make it. And for two miles, I just walked. And somewhere around mile 24, I'm walking. I am spent. And here comes Grandma, power walking past me. Power walking, 25 mile, right there. She, and I said, you are, making this, you are making me look bad. And she says, oh, don't worry. I do this all the time. I thought it was fine. I got showed up by grandma at the very end when I finished. You see, Paul is using a metaphor like that. It's not a sprint. Christian discipleship is running the race. And sometimes you get 
off course, right? Sometimes you can see and it's you. You're the one who took you off course and you struggle. But the point is to win the race. What is point number one? Run to win. Play the game to win. Does anyone in here really love a tie game? No good American loves a tie game, right? That's for soccer and it came from some other country, right? We Americans love to win. And Paul is saying, run to win. The point is to win this marathon. It doesn't matter if you finish walking. It doesn't matter if you finish sprinting. It doesn't matter if you're like me and I walked mile 23, 24, and half of 25 and sprinted the last half a mile. And people were like, "Woo, you are you're doing well. <laughs> the point is to finish the race. And the point is to win. Why are we training? Well, Paul says, it's not to get this perishable crown. It's not, it's not to get a participation trophy. Nothing really is entitled to you except receiving by grace through faith all that you need to run this race by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what you have in the church. And people, I think, read this passage and you automatically think, okay, to finish the race, Paul is saying, Run this, what, run, run this race and finish it so you can go where after you die? Heaven, it means that, yes. But go back and read this passage. What comes before this? Paul is saying, man, when I was out there, when I wasn't in prison, when I was out there, I was becoming like all people to win all people. I went to those who were still following the old covenant and I followed their customs, customs so that I could win them. I talked with slaves and I made myself a slave so that those slaves could see Christ in me. He said, I went out there and I lived with the people and I played t-ball with my neighbors and I went to ball games with my neighbors and I went to those boring city hall meetings and sometimes argumentative city hall meetings. And I voted with my neighbors. And I had fellowship dinners with my neighbors. And I had my neighbors over. Why? So that I could win every possible person to Jesus Christ. So that I wouldn't be disqualified when I finished that race. So that we could all get to the end of the race. Guys, Paul says, if you're gonna start this marathon, if you're gonna run it, win it, finish it. It doesn't matter how you finish it, finish it. And it's not just about going to heaven after you die. It's about taking as many people with you to the Holy Land. And the church said, that's what you're about, is it not? Uh, why do we uh, feel those, uh, the, those uh, what do we feel on, uh, on the, the Thursday, the, the backs? I, I'm just going blank. Snack packs. Snack packs, thank you. Why do we do that? Well, one reason is just to help, right? And we got the means. The other reason is that people in the community who need those say, man, those people love us. Those people actually at the very least care. So that we can share the gospel with them. The final, the final point I would make is Paul says, go into training. He's not like this guy who's just running laps with no purpose. He's not like this boxer that, you know, all he does is hit the bag, right? All he does is shadow box or whatever. All he does is do his jump ropes all day long, all day long. He's not like a guy who's training to never play. And I've seen people like that. They go through football two a days, but they don't want to get in the game because they're afraid to get hit, right? 
Well, why are you even putting yourself through that? It's not fun, right? Paul says, man, if you're training, the whole point is to get in. And it looks like a whole, it looks a whole lot like an Olympian training to run that 100 or to throw that distance. He says, I beat my body. I made my body do what it needed to do when it needed to do it the most. In Christianity and sports, does practice make perfect? Yes or no? I tell all my kids this. Does practice make perfect? Perfect practice makes perfect. So when you're coming to Sunday school and you're, and you're going through your week, you might have missed, missed the goal. You might have been defeated on Tuesday, but Sunday's coming. Amen, church? On Sunday, we remember that we are the resurrected people of Jesus Christ. And though we might not be perfect on Tuesday, we rise up again. And when we come to this table, we remember the one who was perfect, who made us perfect by grace through faith. Would you pray with me as we come to the table of our Lord? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that we do not have to run this race on our own. We thank you that we thank you that your Holy Spirit is our trainer and we train with our brothers and sisters. And now we come to this table and we remember the ultimate game, your life, death, and resurrection. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf. He gave thanks to you. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Here, take it, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And when the supper is over, he took a cup and he passed it to his disciples. And he said, here, take and drink. This is the blood of the new covenant, my blood of the new covenant, shed for you, poured out for you. Do this every time in remembrance. So we, with all the saints, for so many years, have prayed the prayer, Lord Jesus, come and make these gifts of bread and juice be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ broken and shed for all of the world. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the church said, invite you to come. We'll, we, will, uh, we will partake in the Holy Communion, the Great Thanksgiving through intention. I will give you a piece of bread and you'll dip it if you've never done this before. I know it's, you know, we're still in COVID season in the early church, the first couple hundred years. So that if all of you, if, as long as you have the juice or you don't have the juice and you have the bread, or if all you have is bread and no juice, it's still the same thing. They actually debated that. So today I invite you to come. Don't feel comfortable dipping it in. Just take your body. Come as the Spirit is.
perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending, bring from above, angels of mercy, whispers of love, this is my story. Song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. And my Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. great again and again and again and again and again in your life. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you, the ultimate trainer. And now go, like a team, and win this race. Amen, church? Amen. Bless you. Amen.